Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. There's one less issue that I want to talk about before we leave the topic of DP movement. And that has to do with an interesting pattern that you find in types of intransitive verbs and their case properties. The phenomenon we're going to talk about here is called unaccusativity. Here's the pattern. There appear, in fact, to be two kinds of intransitive verbs. There are verbs like dance, and verbs like arrive. The dance class of verbs we call unergative verbs, and the arrive class of verbs we call the unaccusative verbs. Now the origins of these names are uninteresting, except to the sense, except to the extent that unaccusative implies that these verbs can never assign an, an, an accusative case, which is what we want um, to draw away from those names. Now here's the idea. Unergative verbs typically have either an agent or an experiencer as their subject. Whereas in unaccusative verbs, a different pattern emerges. You seem to have a theme in the subject position. And we are going to argue that in fact in these sentences that are unaccusative, the surface subject originates in an object position and moves into the subject position as part of the transformation of DP movement. Um, so these verbs, these unaccusative verbs, are effectively inherently passive. They have a single argument, which is a, the complement of the verb, a theme, that moves into subject position for case reasons. So this kind of analysis would look like this. You have a verb like arrived. Um, it has a minus accusative uh, feature, like just like a passive verb. So any DP that is in its complement position won't be in a case position. We have a position higher up in the tree, the specifier of the TP, which is a case position. So this underlying theme moves into the subject position just like it does in passives. Except, here's the big difference, there's no passive morphology. The idea underlying that is in fact there is no voice phrase with these particular class of verbs. So there's no agent that's introduced by the voice phrase and there's no overt passive that's going to force this verb to have minus accusative case features. It just inherently has them. Let's look at what kind of evidence we might have for this kind of analysis where the themes are generated low and then move into the subject position for case uh, purposes. First of all, there's a big difference between unergative verbs and unaccusative verbs as to whether or not they allow an optional object. So take, for example, Stacy danced the jig. This is an acceptable sentence along with Stacy danced. So a jig appears to be some kind of optional object, which is going to take accusative case. Unergative verbs allow you to have objects in these positions even though the verbs are intransitive. By contrast, unaccusative verbs never allow an object, which is precisely what you predict if, um, if these verbs are unable to assign an accusative case. Another piece of evidence comes from the phon phenomenon known as their inversion. Um, in English, sometimes, for some dialects, but not all dialects, you can, do, you can create a sentence where you put a there um, in the subject position and you put um, the, the normal subject in object position. Um, so you can say, for example, for many people, there arrived three men at the palace. Um, this kind of existential there construction appears to be possible with um, unaccusative verbs but is ruled out with um, unergative verbs. And this makes sense, right? Because if, um, if effectively what's going on in these cases 
is that the uh, subject noun phrase, the subject element like three men, is um, post-verbal. It is showing up in its base position. So there arrived three men is okay because three men is in the object position. But in the unergative uh, cases, three men is never in this position underlyingly. It is never in the post-verbal position. It is inherently um, a subject. Uh, it's inherently an agent. So it's always going to be higher than the verb. So the relative acceptability of the arrived sentence to the dance sentence is due to the fact that this is a position where three men occupies at one point in the derivation at the very least, but three men never appears in this position with a verb like danced. There is, a, there is of course, a, an issue with how uh, three men gets case in um, this sentence, the fourth sentence we have here, but leaving that aside uh, as a technical problem, uh, we note that the relative grammaticality of these two sentences supports the idea that three men starts in the object position of arrived, but it's impossible in the object position of danced, just as predicted by the unaccusativity hypothesis. The, uh, there's actually lots of um, evidence for um, the phenomenon of unaccusity unaccusativity across the world's languages. One thing you'll find is that in many languages, uh, unergative verbs take have type, um, have type um, auxiliaries, in, particularly in the perfect, and um, unaccusative verbs take be type uh, auxiliaries in the, um, in the perfect. So the, here's an example from Italian. Um, we have be as, um, as the auxiliary with arrived, and we have have with telephoned. And telephoned is an unergative, and arrived is an unaccusative. The next piece of evidence is actually really revelatory. The phenomenon involved uh, involves what are called partitive clitics. Partitive clitics are expressions that mean essentially of them or part of them, right? So um, in Italian, this clitic shows up with the form ne. So we have ne here. And what ne means is of them. It shows up when you have a quantifier like many, and you want to indicate that this is a quantifier over a portion. Now, ne cliticization has a very specific pattern. It only ever targets direct objects. So in this first sentence, Giovanni will invite many of them. You get the ne when many of them is in the object position. It doesn't happen anywhere else. So for example, it doesn't happen in, uh, in, either, in uh, prepositionally marked objects. So you can't say Giovanni will speak to two of them. The ne does not show up in that environment. Nor does it happen when the... Um, when the many of them partitive construction appears in subject position. A word is in order about this particular example. In Italian, subjects are often allowed to follow their verbs, which is the case here. The molti is at the end of the sentence, but that's okay. That's a normal position for subjects. The ne um, is not allowed to refer back to this molti if the molti um, is part of the subject. So the critical takeaway here is necliticization is a tool you can use to identify what are objects and what are not objects. Now here's the surprising fact about unergatives and unaccusatives. Unergatives behave just as you might expect. You cannot have necliticization if the um, if the element would be the subject of the sentence. Again, it's all right to have a post-verbal subject in Italian. So here we have multi is um, part of the subject. You cannot have ne representing the of them in this sentence. The verb to phone or call uh, is in fact an unergative verb form. Now here's the surprising thing. The, this does not hold of unaccusative predicates. So it seems to allow um, necliticization 
when the subject is the subject of an unaccusative verb. This is precisely what you would predict if these subjects are actually underlying objects. So remember, nicolaticization targets objects. And the fact that you can have it on the subject of an unaccusative suggests that in fact those subjects are really objects at some deep level. Now our explanation for this is that they're generated downstairs next to the verb in the complement position. These verbs are inherently unavailable for accusative case assignment. They have a minus accusative feature and as a consequence the DP theme that's in the complement position raises to the subject position. The fact that nicolaticization is permitted is because it was underlyingly an object.